Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and we're still at the Inspiron 15. Today we're gonna have a look at the internals and how to upgrade with the extra M2 SSD and the extra 8 gigabytes of RAM that I just purchased. As you can see on the screen right now, I finally have a Dell Inspiron 15 7000 with 2.5 terabyte SSD storage and 16 gigabyte of dual channel RAM. A lot of people asked whether you void the warranty if you open the computer to upgrade it. But Dell provides a 68 page upgrade guide and puts no warranty void stickers on it. So I think you'll be fine there. In the upgrade guide, Dell wrote the maximum capacity for the extra M2 SSD would be 512 gigabyte, but I chose to ignore that. The quick description of the process was that I removed the Philips head screws, took the back cover off, and there was the extra RAM slot and the M2 SSD available. I unplugged the battery, attached the 8GB memory stick and the 2TB M2 SSD, put it back together and it all worked like a charm. However, the truth was that it was slightly harder than that. Finally, after quite a bit of work, I managed to get into the Dell Inspiron 15 7000. And uh, let's just say that it wasn't really a smooth process. Uh, the screws were insanely hard attached. So I tried to do it with a manual screwdriver and it was way too hard. So I had to switch over to this automatic screwdriver. And uh, after some tries, I could get all the screws out. But if you're gonna take this thing apart, please bear in mind that the back screws, they are attached. So they are not supposed to actually come out. You just unscrew them a little bit and then you can get the lid off. But the lid was also extremely firmly attached. It's just a bit of a mess to get into it. But once we're here, we can see the big 97 watt hour battery. Uh, we can see the dual fan setup and the heat pipe running here. We have the extra M2 slot right there, and we have the extra RAM slot right there. I have ordered an extra 2 terabyte SSD and an extra 8 gigabyte RAM, and I'm gonna install them right now and then try to get the lid back on and see if that is equally hard. So this is an Intel 2 terabyte M2 NVMe SSD. And here is an 8 gigabyte RAM uh, Sodim uh, 2666 megahertz. So it should be matching the one that was delivered with the computer. And it clicks in. And now it's time to get the cover back on. From here, I'm starting on this side to get the ports to line up with the chassis right there go around to make sure that it lines up all the way and then look at the other side where the other ports are lining up and then finally looking at the back to make sure that everything is kind of clicking into place there and that seems to work fine all right let's put together a few of these screws and then get into it. I couldn't even boot up the computer. The LED indicators next to the charge port were flashing 2 plus 3, which is an indication for some kind of memory issue. I removed the new RAM stick and it all worked fine. When I removed it and got into the computer, I was setting up the SSD to make sure that that worked as it should and that was all fine. Then redid the whole process and still couldn't get the RAM to work. After that, I felt like, okay, we need to experiment a little bit here and see why this weird issue is happening. So I went ahead and switched the position of the two RAM sticks and then the computer was starting, all fine. This is the result I got in Cinebench R20, 1733 after I installed the dual channel RAM. 
and this is my last result from when I did it before upgrading the RAM. Here you have the benchmark of the new SSD, the Intel 660, 2TB uh, that I installed. Dual channel RAM is also gonna affect gaming performance quite a bit. So here you can see the uh, Heaven benchmark, see how that runs. And finally, let's do some comparison benchmarks in Overwatch that I was playing in my full review. Just to clarify, when I was screencasting Overwatch, the screencaster is limited to 12 frames per second. So you see a lot of stuttering in that video, but that's not because the game is unplayable. The game is very playable, the screencaster is very limited. So right now I'm filming the screen instead so you can have a better look at how it plays. Still running the game in ultra settings, so the same settings as before. So the only difference is we have the dual channel RAM. And uh, as you can see, the game is pretty much locked in at above 100 frames per second, uh, which is quite a big difference compared to uh, the last playtest. Uh, it's extremely, extremely well playable, I have to say. I think though where this is going to make a huge difference is when it comes to connecting to an external screen. Uh, you will be able to raise uh, frames per second up to 144 uh, just by lowering the graphics to maybe high or medium. Uh, and that's a huge plus for me. So all in all, I couldn't get into the chassis, sweated maybe 5 liters in the process and had huge problems before I got the RAM to work, but at least now it works and I have a powerhouse computer with the following specification that weighs exactly 1.8 kilos and had a total of less than 1500 euros, which I'm extremely happy about. That wouldn't have been possible with any other computer on the market. I honestly start to feel like this is a one computer to rule them all situation and I have a hard time seeing when and why I would use my other computers right now. Hope you enjoy watching this video. The next video will be about undervolting the computer and disabling turbo boost and see how that affects the performance. There are quite some interesting things to look at there. If there's anything else you want me to go deeper on with this computer, please let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the content that is coming up the coming weeks. Have a very nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.